Hey guys, number one, when you go to disassemble your uh, M295 or L. These screws that hold your back plate on your pump are a Torx 30. If the one you gotta fight with is the main plug for your oil pump bypass spring and, and piston, it takes a lot of force to get that Loctite to break loose on that cap. Okay, the Torx 30 screws torque to 106 inch pounds or 8.83 foot pounds. Anytime you get an inch pound figure, all you gotta do is divide it by 12 and it will give you the corresponding foot pound torque specification. Now, as far as the large plug for the bypass spring, I'm just gonna snug it down as tight as I can with a with a ratchet. All right, guys, I'm gonna cover both the disassembly and reassembly during this reassembly process. Number one, when you pull this pump apart, always maintain your pump gears in the upwards position. However you remove them from this pump, you put them back in the exact same way. Now, I will blow them off, wipe them off, make sure they're clean before I set them back into this casting. <laughs> because what you put in this casting now goes straight to your motor. So that thing's gotta be clean enough to eat off of. Now, when you disassemble this pump, you're gonna have to physically remove your bypass shuttle or piston. I'm just gonna put a little bit of straight STP on it. I've gotta kinda wiggle it and get it past those threads, because the threads or what's going to keep it from just falling out. You can thread a little bit just in case any of that STP because I wanted to put a little STP right on the end of it and help it slide down through there but I don't want that STP here with my Loctite because I mentioned earlier in the video this plug definitely used blue Loctite so whenever you disassemble your pump you're going to have a, a piston, then you're going to have your bypass spring this fits inside of the piston. Okay, and pull that back out just in case somebody didn't get to see it. Normally, you would just put blue Loctite on this cap and put it back on. Well, now we're adding the 100,000 shim. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our blue Loctite to our fastener. We don't need a ton of it. I'm going to orientate this shim, which is that flattened cut plug, and it fits directly inside this hole, just like that. Hope you guys can see it. So now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to get it started. I think that thing has grabbed a thread, but if you let go of it too soon, that thing will shoot all the way across the garage, and then what? So basically you're just going to run this down with the blue Loctite and you're going to tighten it. Because I'm not trying to, you know, break anything. So I basically just hold it steady with one hand, grab my ratchet, snug it. It's done. The combination of that snugging and your blue Loctite, once it cures, that thing ain't going anywhere. Your hundred thousandths, one hundred twenty-five thousandths, whatever shim you deem necessary is installed, pre, you know, holding pressure on that spring, you're good to go. So now, to assemble this pump, make sure these things are clean. These things are going to sit down right down in there. Tight machined tolerances. See there. There. And just work it real slow down in there. And that is how those things go together. Now what I like to do is just run just a little bit of STP not a lot. I just like to kind of pre-lube these gears a little bit. Here, all we gotta do 
is find our orientation for our cover and you'll be able to tell which way the cover goes back on because it's got bevels for your screws now Mellings didn't put anything on these screws so I'm not intending to put anything on these screws if you want to put blue Loctite on them you can got my 30 Torx 30 T30 set up in this drill so I'm going to torque them but trying to get this done in a fast enough time where it'll fit in my video just take your torque wrench and torque your t30 bolts to 106 inch pounds and this bad boy is ready to go back on the engine Hopefully you guys are able to see that. There's no magic to it. Nothing complicated, nothing special. Blueprinting your M295 milling oil pump. Basically you're just smoothing out some of the rough casting or casting lines to polish that inlet ramp where the oil is going to shoot off of into the pump gears. But when you come in this inlet, your first step is going to be where your O-ring seals your second step is kind of where your tube reaches to so there's no reason for you to lower that inlet ramp below where the tube reaches and how thick the tube is if that makes any sense whatsoever but when you look at your pickup tube inserted in your pump you can mark it and you'll be able to see where you need to work to without overly removing material from that inlet ramp causing a steeper surface. You want that oil to come in, hit the least amount of resistance as possible and get into those pump gear sides and the roof, we'll call it, of that inlet. It had sharp edges and kind of like casting flash where they had machined this piece of aluminum. So basically all I did was go through it radius that transition as it goes into the pump cavity on the on the roof of that inlet opposite of the ramp sides deburred and smoothed into the chambers and that's pretty much all i do i do go into where the ramp meets this uh, chamber and roll that back a little bit i don't know if you guys can see that uh rounded edge I just kind of roll that back the area of interest is this little corner right in here where you make that transition from the tube into that chamber there's a bit there's going to be a sharp edge or build up there now where i believe these pump housings gain the most flow is on the outlet side your transition from this cavity to the outlet is going to be restricted by sharp edges casting flash poor transition from this wall into the actual orifice to feed the engine and here's something you don't see anybody mention on the internet <clears throat> down inside of this it's what we're going to refer to as a dog leg it's a 90 degree turn from where it exits the pump to where it enters the engine it actually comes down and turns 90 degrees well when you look up inside of there you'll be able to see where you can go in and radius the inside turn you can remove all the casting flash that's in that dog leg turn basically i just blueprint we'll call it clean up the transitions of, for the oil to flow nothing major you know what i mean and then i'll shim it and normally I just shim them a hundred thousandths and idle around 750 to 800 rpm you know 58 to 60 cold 48 to 50 hot and I now run 10w40 motor oil in it now with rpm you're going to be at 70 pounds plus the higher you rev it in the rpm range you're not going to need any more oil pressure than this okay guys hopefully you'll be able to get a little bit better view of what I'm referring to 
is when you first start working this exit off of your chamber for your gears, you're gonna notice that when you come off this, this wall, this back wall, you're gonna have a ridge. That ridge is gonna be here, the floor, we'll call it, and over here, you're gonna have thick ridges that come off of this curve into your exit port. Now, keep in mind, just past this short turn or the short curved wall, that is your bypass hole. Right here is where your bypass spring and piston will seal to keep the oil going into the engine, right? Now, you don't want to pull this back too far right in this area because if you pull this back too far, you're going to cause yourself a big headache because that oil is going to come through your new exit hole and deadhead right into the wall of that stupid bypass port. So what I try to do is just remove those sharp edges that the oil has to jump over and cavitate around and create kind of like a little ramp. You'll see where the oil comes out of this, boom, it ramps straight over that uh, bypass hole. Now on this side, all I'm doing is lowering that casting flash down to this floor. Then over here, I'm radiusing this entire edge. Now keep in mind, I try not to get too close to where the two have the pump halves come together, but I try to pull this back, sorry, pull this back into this wall and then radius that sharp angle all the way across. And the way I do that is I just take my pinky, which is my only finger that really fits in there, and I just keep checking that transition from that uh, area where the pump's creating pressure into your exit to go into your engine. I just keep feeling it with my finger until I have all those sharp edges and any kind of protrusion smoothed out, flattened, you know, radius, polished, whatever you want to call it. And then, I, like I said, don't get too crazy right here because if you have it come around too sharp, you could end up with an issue where it's dumping straight into that stupid bypass port and that's going to cause a bunch of cavitation, which we do not want. Now, when you flip this thing over, what you're going to see, hopefully, down inside of this thing, you're going to have what we'll refer to as a short turn to right there. So you can see my finger back behind there. That inside turn or radius, or I'm sorry, angle will be sharp. Like you'll be able to stick your finger in there and you'll feel a sharp ridge. Well, you can cut that back and fully radius that turn. There you go. There's a good shot of it. That's a completely radius turn where it used to be a sharp edge because when it comes through that exit port it literally hits 90 degrees and is forced to turn into the engine so basically you're just going to go in there deburr all those edges cut all that casting and crap out of there and uh, get it to turn a little bit more efficiently so that it you know has less impedance to flow to get into the engine so basically all we're doing is we're bumping up the pressure just, you know, 10, 15 pounds and smoothing, if you will, the path of the oil so that it can flow more efficiently with, with less turbulence to get into the engine. Blueprint or port an LS oil pump to smooth out the oil flow and gain, you know, 10 to 15 more pounds of oil pressure at idle and at RPM by shimming at 100 thou. The thing is, just let your finger do the talking. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you start trying to smooth this out, rub it with your finger. Find the sharp edges, find the casting flash, smooth it out. You're not trying to engineer a brand new oil pump. You're just cleaning up the crap they sent out. Think about that for a minute. So anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And uh, keep your eyes open because I'm going to post the finishing work on those uh, twin turbo 243 heads that we never did finish before. I know, don't beat me up. I'm slow. Keep watching, guys. Thanks again.